Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here with today's watercolour tutorial. Today I'll be demonstrating this semi-abstract landscape for you uh, late summer on the South Downs. I'm beginning today with a piece of plain watercolour paper. This is Saunders Waterford hot pressed 100% uh, cotton watercolour paper cut into a quarter of an imperial sheet. Uh, and I've got it taped onto my board, which is sitting at an angle of roughly uh, 30 degrees, so a slight slope. And I'm beginning with uh, my spray bottle, and I'm just going to give uh, the top third of the paper a good old spray. Before then coming in with my palette knife, you can see I've got some fresh tube paint uh, squirted directly onto the underside of my palette knife. Uh, the colours I'm using today are sap green, Van Dyke Brown and Permanent Yellow. It's a really nice uh, sort of spring-summer combination. It's lovely sort of bright vibrant greens and browns redolent of a, of a lovely summer's day in the countryside. And you can see I'm just pulling the colour across, working from left to right and doing a gentle horizontal with the main body of the colour before doing some quick swipes with my my, uh, the flat of my palette knife uh, just to start bringing that colour down and giving a little bit of texture coming down from that main sort of the main body of the paint that we've got there. And as you can see I'm just using the palette knife to start bringing uh, the paint down, just moving it around a little bit so we get a little bit of texture in that sort of top swipe so it doesn't just look like a big old sort of blot on a landscape. And whilst this paint is lovely and wet you can just, as you can see, just sort of move it around, create little marks with the flat sort of edge of the palette knife. Um, or at this stage if you're more comfortable you can uh, grab a flat brush and do exactly the same thing. Just start moving the paint around a little and just sort of figuring out what looks good and where you sort of want it to move around the paper. And as you can see I've just given it another quick spray with my uh, spray bottle, my mister, and I've just turned it upside down uh, and you can see that the uh, paint is starting to give us this lovely texture along that sort of top line which is now the, the bottom line. Um, so I'm not spraying too heavily, you can see I'm just doing a quick pass with the spray bottle and as you can see along that line we're getting these lovely sort of little frevelly, misty sort of bits coming down into the texture that's been left uh, by the spray bottle rather than coming down in a big old sort of sheet of paint and water which is what would happen if you spray very heavily. So for this technique you just need a, a light touch with the spray bottle and uh, a little bit of patience, that's all. And you can see it's making these lovely uh, sort of marks along this top line. Uh, so I'm going to leave my um, board upside down just whilst this is uh, this is happening. Just pulling out any excess water that looks like it's going to uh, be a bit too much. You can just pull that out with a tissue. Before turning it back right way up. You can see there we've already got some lovely sort of foliage marks already done for us, just created by the uh, the paint, the water, and a, uh, a little help from gravity. <laughs> so with that done, um, I'm going to begin my focus on the lower part of the painting. So I'm using a large flat brush to just add a little bit of colour, just dry brushed gently into this sort of mid-ground and foreground. Uh, again, this is the sap green and permanent yellow that I'm using today. You can see I've kept it very light uh, as this is inspired by uh, the South Downs, which is a sort of chalk downland. So there's lots of pale parts sort of peeping through the grass. Uh, you can see the sort of white chalk peeping through in regular areas. So I wanted uh, a decent amount of white, sort of nice bright paper uh, in this painting. And as you can see, I'm uh, using my palette knife again, the uh, exactly the same technique that I used to make the sort of the top line, those marks there. 
again just putting the fresh tube paint directly onto the underside of my palette and bringing it in a diagonal across the paper and I just sprayed what I've just done there you can see how as soon as you spray it softens the lines really nicely uh, and the paint starts to move it a little bit uh, again keeping the spray quite light so you can see it's not running wildly it's not moving too much but it's just enough to get the paint to soften down uh, if you don't want any of those sort of harsh lines that the palette knife sometimes creates just a quicker a quick spritz with the bottle can get rid of those really nicely And so I'm putting these lines in here to create this sort of grassy bank uh, foreground uh, for this painting, which is why I want this nice sort of nice gentle slope and I'm sort of mixing all the colours in together so I get this lovely sort of blend of the brown, the green uh, and the yellow, which to me is um, a really lovely sort of summery combination, speaks to me of uh, late summer. So I'm just going to start tipping and tilting this lower section again using exactly the same technique I used for uh, the other part of the painting you can see with the spray again we're getting this lovely sort of fluffy line <laughs> uh, across that top bit there which is obviously the bottom part but it now looks like the top uh, just putting a little bit of excess water out with the tissue there on the uh, right hand side you can see we're getting this lovely textural uh, line there formed by the spray bottle and this is uh, what it looks like now that it's dry you can see I left it to dry upside down so we've got these lovely soft lines all the water has gone it's just left these lovely soft washes uh, which I'm really pleased with and now I'm just going to uh, start introducing those little details that are going to make this abstract turn into a recognisable landscape. Uh, so I'm beginning with a lovely strong colour Van Dyke Brown uh, in a lovely sort of strong uh, concentration here with my uh, liner brush to pu start popping in some trees. I'm using my sword liner brush today which is uh, an old favourite of mine, uh, size small. Uh, for this lovely delicate work but of course use any brush uh, that you feel comfortable using for something so delicate uh, a rigger brush would serve you well here uh, or a just a regular uh, thin liner brush So you can see I'm just using really sort of small delicate little strokes to put in these trees, sort of little wispy branches, trying to keep it looking really natural and not too sort of circular or, or lollipop shaped. <laughs> just trying to spread out those branches. I'm going to pop a bit of uh, foliage over the top later on, so you don't need to worry too much about the sort of detail there, but just we want enough uh, that can show through when we put the leaves over so you still get that lovely sort of tree structure underneath. Uh, so I'm just going to carry on adding these trees here uh, th thanks to the, the magic of video editing you didn't have to sit through me painting all three of these uh, I use exactly the same technique as I've just shown you and just using the liner brush to just introduce a little sloping hill there it's a lovely little uh, simple way of introducing some uh, some texture just to use the flat of the liner brush and just sort of lay it um, horizontally across the paper uh, so now that I'm happy with my little trio of trees on the uh, on the top left there, 
um, I'm going to begin my focus on uh, the foreground here and I'm going to begin adding in uh, some grasses to this lovely green bank here. So I'm using the sap green mixed with a touch of permanent yellow and I'm using again this lovely thin liner brush to begin putting in some delicate uh, grasses along this line here. Trying not to completely drown out this lovely soft top line uh, that came from using the spray bottle. Just introducing uh, some lovely grass along the top there. And just keep going basically until you're happy with how it looks. Um, again, I uh, introduced a little bit of Van Dyke Brown into uh, these grasses as well once I had done the main body of them just to add a little depth of colour, a little bit of shadow. Just the idea of some of the earth perhaps being thrown up by the roots and uh, giving the grass that lovely shape and texture. Uh, just introducing that lovely uh, extra depth of colour. And as you can see, I'm just beginning to use a texture brush here to just introduce a little extra dark shadow around the roots of these grasses, sort of along this top bank. This is again Van Dyke Brown, so we're only using the three colours today for today's painting. Uh, and just vary in between them, as you can see, just to get these lovely shapes and colours. Um, and now I can use that Van Dyke Brown that I've just put down there while it's, um, it's still wet, and I can draw it up with the liner brush into the grasses just to uh, sort of make everything blend and uh, look really nice and textural just make sure everything sort of goes together as I'm uh, adding in these longer or wispier grasses along this top bank. I think it's really nice to uh, use a limited palette for something like this which is slightly abstract but still hopefully recognisable as a, uh, a lovely late summer scene. Uh, as, as you can see I have a really <laughs> really limited uh, my palette only three colours um, but I think it's three colours that work really prettily together and give a lovely sort of uh, a lovely grassy effect. Instead of the, um, the texture brush uh, you can certainly use something like um, uh, a stippling brush or basically any br any old brush that you've got that's uh, perhaps got a little bit ragged from overuse, the bristles are all poking out at all angles. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we've all got a brush like that, I know I certainly have a, an old faithful in the back of my brush drawer that just was used too many times. Uh, and those are really great actually for this sort of work because it doesn't matter if they uh, don't make a clean line. In fact a clean line is what you don't want so you just use them to scrub away and get a little bit of texture in there. So that's what you can use if you don't have a texture brush. Uh, but for now I'm actually um, I'm using a fan brush but again you can use any uh, brush that you've got that you uh, like to use here to just spatter on uh, a little bit of extra detail. I'm using um, all the three colours, uh, spattering on some yellow and some brown here, and I'm just going along the tops 
off the grasses and just uh, try not to create too large spatters. Um, I find if you use very, very loose paint, you will get larger spatters, sort of larger little droplets. Uh, whereas if you use uh, less runny paint, you will get smaller droplets. Uh, so that's a, that's a pro tip there. And I'm going along and putting that along the tops of the grasses. Uh, you can see some more grasses have magically appeared in the foreground there. I've just popped those in off camera using exactly the same technique as you guys have just watched. Uh, and the spatters, I think, just give a lovely little uh, sort of hint of a sort of summer insects and dust and pollen and all those sort of lovely little motes that twinkle and dance in the uh, in the rays of sun in the summer air. So that's why I love to uh, I love to pop them into these sorts of paintings. But of course, they are entirely optional. Uh, and as you can see, I'm now adding in the flowers. I've chosen yellow flowers, uh, of course, because I'm using the limited palette for this. So again, the permanent yellow, lovely, versatile, sort of uh, rich golden yellow, sort of buttercup colour, works really well. And all I'm doing is using my small round brush with the yellow paint going along the tops of the grasses and basically forming almost a little heart shape, just a little crossover of the paint or a, a heart or a U or sort of almost a tulip shape. Just uh, I think find really effective for these small delicate flowers just popping on uh, to the semi-abstract painting. So you don't want anything too detailed that's going to take up too much time or too much effort and also you don't want anything too sort of realistic that's going to bring you out of the semi-abstract landscape. So just something that speaks of flower rather than having to be all the detail that uh, you have to put into a, a sort of a photorealistic flower. And as you can see, this, is, this isn't taking me much time at all to just go along this grassy bank here and add in some of these delicate little yellow blooms. Of course, if you don't want to use a limited palette, you could grab any beautiful colour from your collection uh, and use that for the flowers instead. I feel like a red or a pink would look equally as beautiful here. I'm also going to uh, introduce the flowers along this uh, second little grassy bank in the foreground here, which I'm also not going to do on camera just because uh, you've seen the technique. Uh, it's exactly the same way. I'm just going to go along and add them at irregular intervals to just make the placement look really sort of pretty and really natural. So there we go, there's our, our last little flowers added. So again I'm using the texture brush to just stuff up this sort of top right corner. This is the last sort of area here that I want to focus on. Uh, and just adding a little bit more depth of colour, a little bit more texture and a little bit more interest. And now that I've done that, I've decided to just introduce one more tree here to just uh, sort of balance out that composition a little bit. So again, using the same technique as I showed you before to do the tree on the left, we are now going to do the tree on the right. Uh, so again, using a really nice strong Van Dyke brown paint and just using the thin liner brush to just pull upwards, pull these lovely thin branches out and get some really nice sort of soft, spontaneous uh, lines here. Nothing too straight, nothing too um, sort of uh, designed looking. We want these branches to look really sort of wibbly wobbly and natural. <laughs> and again, uh, going to pop some foliage over them shortly, so not everything will be seen. We just want enough uh, lovely dark structure to show through when we do put the foliage on, so it looks really natural and uh, beautiful.
and again just using the texture brush to gently just root that dream more softly into the landscape and look, make it look like it is growing up out of that lovely grassy ridge there. So now that I'm happy with my trees, I'm going to pop on a little bit of spatter detail. <laughs> Just popping this on underneath where I'm putting the foliage so it looks like it's um, sort of coming out of the trees. Sort of as I put the foliage over the top, uh, we're going to get this lovely sort of spatter detail sort of in the background. Again, just looking like buzzing insects perhaps, or some pollen or f sort of flower petals falling, uh, catching the sunlight. I'm using mostly uh, the permanent yellow to add these little spatters, uh, a little bit of the brown as well just to uh, add some contrast. And again I'm using uh, my paint, I'm trying to be careful to make it not too runny so we're getting some quite small sort of delicate spatters, they're just like tiny little dust motes rather than the sort of larger more powerful splatters. And I'm really just focusing them um, around the trees, a little bit just along that, um, that ridge line there, but mostly just around the tops uh, of the tree branches. And now again I'm going to use my texture brush here to just start stippling in some foliage. Uh, this, at this point of course you can use whichever brush you feel comfortable with, it doesn't have to be a texture brush or a stippling brush, for me this is a shortcut, um, but you can get some lovely marks using uh, say a round brush as well and just sort of dabbing it on carefully. Um, I'm using the permanent yellow mixed with a touch of Van Dyke Brown and just going over and layering up the colours and just focusing around the sort of tops of the branches. You can see I'm just layering up a little bit of the brown over the yellow that I just put down and basically I'm just going to keep doing this, putting on the uh, putting on the nice strong yellow colour and a little bit of the brown just to uh, give it that body and that extra texture and shadow, that sort of depth that we really want. Uh, and then just adding more yellow to just uh, make it brighter just until I'm happy, I'm happy with the way it looks. And there we are with the finished painting. Uh, you can see I just layered up a little bit more yellow there and I thought, you know what, if I keep going I'm going to ruin it. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to know when to stop, uh, stop fiddling with it and just let it go. So for me this is the finished painting, thank you everybody so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video, um, I hope you liked the painting, I'd love to hear what you think of it uh, in the comments. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, you can uh, follow the link below to my Patreon page where there are a whole bunch of exclusive videos ready and waiting for you. A huge uh, shout out and a big thank you to those of you who are already Patreon members who help support this channel, you wonderful people. Uh, and so that's it from me today. Thank you everybody again very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all again soon in the next video.